and I was with the Hall of the fans, and yeah. at the end they started singing. What was it? It was Tottenham get proud of. We got the song. Where's the Strava for pickup soccer? Yeah. yeah. So that's what we're creating now. In my opinion, the two best teams in the world are not in the Champions League. Messi's the most popular athlete in America. Really? That's crazy. So I'll walk up to Zidane and say, "Not today." <laughs> <laughs> this is my bold prediction of the podcast. Mm. The United States will make it to the. Hello and welcome to another episode of our show, Center Sport. On today's show, we have another very special guest. He's traveled all the way from America just for this podcast. The future president of the United States is Josh Murphy. <laughs> it's an honor to be here. <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. How's everything going? You all good? Great. Great. Long night, you know. But <laughs> good to be in London. How's London treating you so far? Fantastic. I'm sorry, you know, with the Tottenham. No, man, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. Sure. But I'm a Fulham fan, so I was yeah. yeah. yesterday. <laughs> yeah. A great performance. Yeah, yeah. And then well, it's awful some performance. Pen- it's, oh, some strategic placing right here, then. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 I I mean, my boys. Yeah. I, I saved you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was a great performance or, or a shit performance out of Tottenham, honestly. Maybe yeah. both. But it it's felt, probably shit from Spurs. It was they shit. are shit, so yeah. it makes sense. I mean, it was just when we think we've lost the Spursy tag, you know, yeah. you go yeah. and do exactly. the most Spursy thing possible. Never but well played, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, There's one that. benefit, is you had a good day. Yeah. <laughs> and I was with the Hall of the fans, and yeah. at the end, they started singing, what was it? It was Tottenham, get proud of it. We know the song. Yeah, we know the song. It's a favourite line. How did you find the stadium, though? It's what I think is one of the nicest stadiums in the league. I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Were you in the new stand, or were you on the... We were right next to the new stand oh, so the new stand was just to our right uh, but we were out drinking beers before the yeah. game drinking beers at halftime on the river that's lovely man I love that nice yeah, yeah, yeah. Really do. you went down to Bournemouth as well right what, yeah. what's you here tell us a bit about what you're doing in Bournemouth what, what it is you've got going on the side yeah um, so I'm a co-founder of, of kind of a soccer tech company uh, and we've spent like kind of the last eight months um, really trying to get our finger on the pulse of kind of what is missing in the in the world of footy you know it's such a it's such an oversaturated world but it has so many participants and fans that we kind of took the time to host events talk to people and what we found is um you know like we the four of us sitting here i'm sure all of us at one point in our lives were like Fuck man, I'm gonna go pro. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I still think it. I still, I still think that. I, I still look up Jamie when I'm when I'm really fucked up. I'll put Jamie Vardy like he was 26. <laughs> like, maybe it'll happen. Right? But like we all thought that, right? And the reality is 99.98 percent of us did not make yeah. it to that level. Yeah. And but we're the ones that carry the culture, right? Yeah. Like the reason that Kylian Mbappe is getting a fucking massive boot deal is to sell us boots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so we sat there and we were kind of grappling with this and we realized like there are hundreds of millions of amateur footballers who love the sport, maybe more than the guys who get paid yeah, yeah. millions, right? What do they have for their journey? Like yeah. where is the where yeah. is the Strava, you know, the running app? Mm. Like where is the Strava for pickup soccer? Yeah. yeah. So that's what we're creating now is like a, a home for the pickup soccer player where you can track your connections and we're so, gamifying it, right? Yeah, so yeah, no. We're basically telling people, <laughs> we're going to reward you for doing what you love the most. That's yeah, sick. Yeah. Which, like, we're, we're working on it now. Sick. But my, my co-founder lives in Bournemouth. So I went there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, place. yeah. It is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminds me of New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> as a Jersey boy. Yeah, there we go. So will this app be kind of launched in, in Europe? or We're going to launch in, in New York. York. We're going to focus uh-huh. on New York. Nice, nice. Um, just because... It's where I am. It's where another one of our co-founders is, and it's just such yeah. a concentrated. Well, I guess it's interesting that the so you're obviously a, an American that loves football. It's not the number one game in the U.S. Cause, so I think there's something about kind of your story. How how do you love football so much? What is it that's brought you to it? Yeah, um, it's interesting. I would say it's because I moved to Germany, but actually, factually, before I moved, when when I was seven years old i probably misremember things as we all do yeah. you know yeah. but the way that i remember it is remember that goal that Thierry Henry scored against against man U? yeah i think it was where he yeah. pops the, it off oh yeah against, yeah. against Bottas. bro i Beauty. remember i was like fucking seven years old and, <laughs> there, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and like i i used to watch i feel like the games used to be an hour earlier um than they were maybe i'm misremembering that as well but i used to get up when I was really young, like seven, eight, nine, I would get up every Saturday morning, 
6 a.m. I'd be in front of the TV for, for lineups at 6 yeah. 10 uh, <laughs> and, and I would watch and yeah, then yeah. I moved to Germany okay so you were already into football before you'd kind of gone to Germany nice yeah and then who's your team in Germany? Air to Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Not the best season, I guess, so far, not but... Not, um, best, not the best time supporting them, but <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long time, and we haven't had anything close to the best season yet, yeah. um, but, you know. Do you watch it? Do you watch a lot of it? Like, I watch uh, almost every game. They're playing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was two two last. Yeah, last we checked. Check. No, no, we might need to give an update yeah, <laughs> at some uh, point. We might need a little pause. What's the score? <laughs> <laughs> From what? I watch. I mean, well, I've heard you love a bit of mid-table mediocrity. That would be oh, oh, my wow. wow! I think it's a good wow. Wow! I wish, <laughs> I wish we, it's a Spurs. That's what we're yeah. saying. Very, I've it's very rich again. coming from him of all people. <laughs> very, very rich mid-table mediocrity. But I was just going to say that like, normally when people come over and they fight with Father Sport and they're maybe not from the country where the team's playing in, maybe they I'd normally see they you know, go from Man United or an Arsenal <laughs> yeah. or, or Liverpool. So That's you know, I think it's quite refreshing that you've gone for like a half of Berlin and Fulham. You know. I'm sure they're happy to have you. <laughs> sure, <that's laughs> <pizza. laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess for the culture. You yeah. know? What, what, what was it about Hearth and Fulham that they'd be attracted to you? So Fulham, um, one of our kind of my, my mom's godson and one of my role models, um, who's like probably six years older than I am. He's like he and his his dad are like massive Fulham fans. They yeah. they grew up. He grew up here. He's gone to games his whole life. So like. And they're very close to the club. So for me, growing up, they always had Americans. What? So Yes, of course. Clint right, Dempsey. Yeah. Brian McBride, yeah. Casey Keller, Clint Dempsey going even like further back. Who was right? the goalie? Brad Friedman? Brad Friedman. Yeah. Brad Friedman. <laughs> Casey yeah. Keller. Yeah. Right. Like, so, so I'm thinking like maybe starting when I was eight, uh, every birthday, I'm getting signed gloves by oh, Casey wow. to Josh. Mary, oh, unreal. Uh, happy birthday. Like Clint Dempsey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> And I'm like, this is sick. sick right? <laughs> there was never, there was never any other. Like, I would be lying. I, I felt when I was like 10 years old, I was like looking in the mirror. I'm like, fuck, okay, I gotta be a Fulham fan. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I can't justify this. <laughs> and Hertha was just, you know, we they the they were the main team in Berlin, unfortunately. <laughs> but a no union. Longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I picked him, and I'm a loyal guy. So I yeah, you got to stick with. Guys. Look at Cam. Cam's been through years yeah, of pain. Yeah, and he's yeah. still yeah. there. <laughs> one way or the other. Hopefully, I'll get my just desserts one day. But, yeah, it feels less and less, less, less likely every yeah. game. Every game I watch, unfortunately. But yeah, no, I feel your pain, fella. I, uh, listen, <laughs> I don't feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no fair play. At least we fair lose, play. and I'm like, fuck yeah. hell, we're gonna finish in 18th. Yeah. Year. <laughs> we'll go down. You guys, it's always like you might, you might, and then you never do it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Be, always a bridesmaid, never the bride. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it it'd be worried. Yeah. It's like but being, I don't know if you know your Greek mythology, but there's a Greek oh, of a guy on, who, who is basically being eternally punished to push a boulder up a hill, yeah. and then he gets to the top and it'll roll back down again. Mm. And like, if I could describe my Spurs fan of him one way, it'd be that story right there. Just like pushing it, you think you're about to do it. Champions League and then, final. Yeah, and then it just <laughs> rolls, and as it rolls back down, it squashes you on the way down too, so... Yeah, I don't know why I do it, but it's good fun oh, every now and then, I guess. I get it. It's like a sadistic. <laughs> yeah, mate, it is. Thing, it is. Yeah. It's like I like punishing myself, to be honest with yeah. you, but that's all sport. Have that's you all been um, watching the, uh, the the title race in the Bundesliga as well? Bayern versus not Bayer Leverkusen? Race, it? Yeah, it's not, not a race. Yeah. It's not a race. Yeah, I mean, not really. You but. know, on that point, you know what I was saying the other day is, in my opinion, the two best teams in the world are not in the Champions League. Who, who Liverpool and Leverkusen. Oh, okay. I think. I think. And City. City. Leverkusen well. are the the best team in the world. In terms of, Bro, I, I get what you mean. In terms of I don't actual think football beats played. Them. Wow. I don't think anyone beats them wow. right now. Right now, maybe City and Liverpool are the only two. Maybe your boys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <Matt. Maybe. laughs> yeah. But like for me, I, I'm more interested. If it's a Leverkusen Liverpool Europa League final, I don't care who's in the Champions League final. I'd rather really? go to that. Fair. Yeah, fair. Would be a good game. It would be. Although well, like, Liverpool, I don't know as well this year. They, 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 it's a it surprised year. me. It's yeah, a destiny yeah. year. It yeah, surprised it's... me with their rebuild, the way that Liverpool have been able to come back. And I mean, it's been unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's, it's crazy that Klopp's decided to like he's just gone and yeah. made it. And yeah. then like, I mean, maybe you could say it's him leaving Liverpool. In, leaving. He's, li he's the leaving them in the best you know position saying? possible. Yeah, for, for sure. Like they can't, they can't walk out of Klopp's era thinking this guy's done us dirty by mm. leaving. He yeah. like they are good. Yeah. Look at the. They're about to. We're about to play them today, this afternoon, of and they're probably going to play kids, and they're probably going to steam. I'm walking into. My dad called. My dad's a Liverpool fan, and he called me this morning. And he goes, "So how many? How much pity do you want today?" And I was like, what are you talking oh, about? He goes, three 0 four 0 And I was like, "Oh, okay. There we go. It started already." Yeah. 
No, it's a shame. I, I didn't think about uh, Leverkusen though, and uh, you know they're called Neverkusen for a reason, oh, you know, because they have found creative ways. I think in 2001 they got to the f- cup final, the German cup final, Champions League final, and they were in the in the shot for the league on the final day of the season. Yeah. Didn't win a single one. Yeah. So I, f- I feel like, and you know, with Bayern, uh, they, they share history. Can't, they can't, they can't say that, but I would, if I'm a Leverkusen fan, I'm saying I'm not counting my chickens until they lose, yeah, until yeah. it's mathematically impossible. I don't yeah. think can might of Bayern, you know, as well, as good as they look. Don't get me wrong, as I good as they you. look. But you know? look at look at the Pokal, like they. I everyone talks about this in Germany. It's like, are they finally gonna kind of shed their yeah. neighbor Neverkusen yeah. tag? But then you look at like the fucking DFB Pokal. Yeah, you see who's in that, bro. Mm-hmm. That was, the, the, the guys in the semi-final, the, the ones that knocked out Slautin, uh, Leverkusen, and someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Funny enough, Nick uh, Nikki A was telling me was talking to me about. It. He's like, you look at the FA Cup for example, and there's mm. what well, the only team that's of uh, Sauerbrücken or Kaiser Slautin's level or level is Coventry. Yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. the rest are all the big boys. Mm-hmm. Where in Germany, Saarbrücken have knocked out what well, München Gladbach, Munich, and someone else. Frankfurt, Frankfurt. Yeah. and Frankfurt. Yeah. That doesn't happen in England. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't happen in England. Yeah. So or it has a made time, time, time. Yeah, 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 yeah they, were, they, they had a little run. <laughs> Wrexham had a little run last yeah, year. Yeah, but it's, it's not. It's nothing. Well, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I mean, they're they're. Those were legit. I when they play on a different field that's not their home field, mm-hmm. it's going to be a different story. Yeah, of course. Because you look at these like. I tuned into the game the other day. I'm like, what the fuck? Are they what is this? Yeah. <laughs> They're sliding around out there. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's no grass. <laughs> <laughs> but, bro, it's crazy. Like, yeah. and the fans. The one thing I will, German fans are next level. Oh yeah. my god! Like next level. Yeah. And when the fans are behind Hertha, medium mediocre second league team that's run like shit <laughs> and loses money and is always disappointing 46,000 fans on average in the yeah, stadium I mean, home game that's yeah, 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 I mean insane. they're 14th in the world yeah yeah right? nuts like, it's, it's like insane. what the fuck yeah, yeah. I guess on on German fans as well. There's been a lot of kind of controversy over over the deal of the foreign investment in the Bundesliga. Yeah. What 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 are your thoughts on that? I know you kind of sent us a video of you at one of the Hertha games, yeah. and the the fans just going absolutely mental. Yeah. Well, sorry, um, what, all, all, all the protests. What, what's going on? So basically, um, Germany has a very specific rule that only Germany has, where it's the, yeah. Everything like the team has to be owned. It's called the fifty plus one. Fifty plus one, yeah. Where the team has to be owned by the fans. So the fans are way more important in Germany, like factually, not mm. like yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're way more important to the club and the operations of the club because of this. That's why they're so passionate, and that's why there are forty six thousand fans going to see a team get fucking battered and just like playing <laughs> at home, right? Yeah. But they're very romantic, yeah. right? That's the one thing about German fans. Like they have this. They're very and and uh, in some senses it's the most beautiful model, mm. and in some senses it's like reload the gun, shoot yourself in the foot, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. How many times are you going to do that? And and the issue is that there's now Germany has a great product, right? Like they have great teams, they have the most goals on average per game. It's exciting. The fans are into it. So the only thing that's preventing them from being at that level is the money, right? Yeah. Like the the NFL style marketing yeah. that the Premier League's trying to do. Yeah. You look at the the Bundesliga and it's like, yeah, they need that. Yeah. So they were about to bring in some large investment uh, from the United States, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Hertha, at a game I was at, kick-started these, bro, it was fucking crazy. Where I'm, at, <laughs> I'm at this game. It's a, This game probably had 65 or 70,000 people in the stadium because it was Hertha versus Hamburg, which is the yeah. two biggest teams yeah. in the second Hamburg. league. Yeah. I don't apologize for saying that word. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bro, we're like 60 minutes into the game and the Oskurva, which is the Hertha fan section, they're wild. They're epic. Like, really, Hertha has an unbelievable fan group mm. like the core is they're great they're yeah. epic yeah. out of nowhere i just look to my right and i have a bunch of friends that sit with them they're just hucking tennis balls <laughs> but there's this it's like west ham where you have a track yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so like you can't you can't throw it they had those you know like um when you're playing fetch with a dog and you're like, the launches. Yeah, yeah, bro. they had like that is unreal they had like <laughs> money <laughs> launchers right and they're just fucking hucking <laughs> balls and we're all looking around. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and we're just watching these balls. And they're coming from everywhere out of the fan section. 20 minutes. Wow. This, of tennis balls as well. They had to stop the game. They they send the uh, 
the, they send the coach over because the Hertha like interim president was like walking down like he was ready to go out there and like kind of got to the corner of the field and he was like ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna grab the coach <laughs> and he goes and grabs the coach and and the Hertha like backup goalie who used to be one of the ultras yeah and and they went over and the level of respect in Germany is so much so that the, the coach went over and was like are we going to be able to finish the game? That's the first thing he said. <laughs> wow. Because I have friends who are sitting there and they, and they heard the conversation. Yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, guys, are we going to be able to finish the game? He wasn't <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, are we going to be able to finish? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're not going to. And they're like, okay, well, they're sending us back in the locker room, but like, you guys will chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to get the point across. And they're like, all right, cool. <laughs> And wow. that kickstart what Hertha did. Yeah, because I saw a lot of other teams, right, started doing those protests. Everyone else was throwing, like, chocolate coins, like, they're yeah. so money-hungry. Yeah. And then Hertha was like, fuck it. Like, <laughs> we're going <gonna, laughs> to break the game up. Yeah. So, <laughs> what, what's the actual issue? So they've, they've got the 50 plus one rule, which sort of involves the fans at the moment. So what, they, what's this, what, what kind of is this external investment from the U.S. going to do to the game over there? Like, what, what's kind of the game plan, I guess? Yeah. And what are they angry about? Yeah, I would say, I would, I would say two things. I've just given the fans a lot of credit. And now it's time to hold the fans accountable. They don't know yeah. what mm. the issue is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. right? Like they, they don't, they're just protesting money for the sake of protesting but, money. Yeah. And but. then to hold the, the Bundesliga and the DFL accountable, they've done a horrible job of communicating of course, what yeah. the money is for, yeah. Yeah. how yeah, the yeah. money's going to be used. So I think it was, it's the way that I'd like to see it is it's a learning moment for both sides. Yeah, yeah, but it's a bigger learning moment for the DFL, mm -hmm. right? They need they they can't just say we're gonna fucking raise a bunch of money and pour it <laughs> in, and because yeah. the fans have shown they're bigger than the DFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they need to educate, explain, and then the fans owe it to to the game to listen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So that's how I would say. Yeah, it. no, first we need Josh at the top of the DFL <laughs> sorting it all out. <laughs> Go figure it out. Uh, I mean, I mean. <laughs> it makes sense it's like what we we were having a conversation about potentially growing rugby and what rugby needs in terms of like the the marketing side of thing the money pumping into like nations like Finland and stuff like that for example mm -hmm. and like you said it's it's almost come to a head where the 50 plus one has done great but to grow the game in Germany they need that extra little push and it's like it's getting to the point where you see even in the Prem there's so much money in the Prem but the same sort of teams are winning it so now everyone everyone is looking around thinking, wait, what the hell is going with with mm -hmm. Munich? But you would love it, for example, if Gladbach could do that, if Freiburg could do that, it's like random teams could even get in with a little sniff, but they need the money, they need an extra investment for it. So it, like you said, it's it's one of those times where everyone needs to just come together and say, hey, how can we do this? 100%. And like I think to that point, what Leverkusen is doing is really <laughs> unbelievable. Honestly, yeah. it's unbelievable because it's... It's not on Leicester's level. Mm. That was insane. But when you look at, like, generally operating budgets dictate what you can do. Championships. Yeah. Mm. Right? Like, if you look at, look at the French League when you look at budgets, it's like 600 million, <laughs> 180 million. <laughs> right? like, 600 million is just, yeah. just for Mbappe as well. Literally. Yeah. Like, uh, the drop-off. And, like, you, you look at all these leagues. You look at the German League. Like, Bayern has so much more money to spend. Yeah than Dortmund yeah. even. And yeah. Dortmund has so much more money to spend. Yeah. And then you go to Leverkusen, who are fourth, because Leipzig has had a bigger budget at the beginning of the season than mm -hmm. they did. It's really impressive to operate within your budget. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's why I'm a Fulham fan, like I said. It's very frustrating to me that when I see the... And this is a Tony Khan, again, which one of them? Fucking buy some players, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Invest some money. Jesus Christ. I mean, when I look at the... They, they release the table where it's like... How are you um, performing based on your spending? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it really is true, right? Yeah. So, so you look at all these, like Man U is like, oh, <laughs> like wow. <laughs> Chelsea, Todd, Todd Bowley might be the biggest joke <laughs> in the entire <laughs> sport, Fulham, right? Yeah. I mean, that is a joke. But yeah. then you look at Fulham. At the time, they were in 12th place. I think maybe still are. And they're four points ahead of where they should be. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're overperforming in yeah, the yeah. place, and it's our what third, fourth year in a row in the, yeah, in the league. Yeah. Like yeah. for me, that's unacceptable. Yeah, yeah, right. Like you have to invest money back into the squad to have a serious squad. Yeah, yeah. And on that note, maybe it's not important for 
for Fulham to be competing for Europe. Maybe they're really happy with what they're doing. Maybe yeah. they have a nice little he's, model. He's the Jags owner as well, right? Yeah. Same owner. So maybe he's uh, got more of a focus there. Wrestle, than, uh, wrestle, whatever. He's got a big wrestling really. thing. I, I was in the stadium yesterday in the home end, and they uh, they flashed the wrestling thing. That, like there's some <laughs> wrestling thing in Wembley, and it was just like a collective groan. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, fuck it. Man. <laughs> I'm not this thing <laughs> I'm like okay. <laughs> I've always wanted to stay, uh, sit and watch a game in that little cottage. That yeah, they have, like, yeah. Mm, I think that's the that. oldest, like oldest dream. stand in English football. That little one on the side. There. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, 150 years old or something. Crazy I saw like Andreas that. Pereira talking about. Did you guys see that interview last <laughs> week? Where he was, he's talking about. He's like, I brought some friends over from Brazil, and like after the game, they're like, Andreas. <laughs> There's a house in the state. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's yeah. that as well. It's so it's weird. Like yeah. They caught it. Yeah. They're like, what, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? What the hell's going on here? What is this? <laughs> Yeah, that is very cool. Very cool stadium. So let's let's go away from kind of bad governance in the Bundesliga to great governance and your team that your your family owns Gotham FC. Winning what I saw, what the NWSL. Yes, I saw saw that on your Insta. Yes, Huge. congratulations, was, congrats. Thank was you. that very happy day? I actually saw an. Did you see an article yesterday that the uh, who is it? San Diego Wave manager came out and said uh, they won the league because they like finished top, but they they and, didn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you want to see the medal? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Touche, uh, exactly. Uh, Touche. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> I was at so the after party and I didn't see him there. <laughs> <laughs> love that, love that. Uh, but yeah, how was that? How, how was the experience of kind of, you okay. know, having a team and, and, and watching it? And it must be a bit different kind of supporting it as, as more on the ownership side than as a fan, I guess. It was unreal, honestly. Yeah. It, it was like, We've been, uh, we're the oldest team in the league, mm -hmm. so we've been, or we used to be called Sky Blue. I actually played a huge part in our rebranding of Gotham. I love I'm it. I'm a yeah. big Batman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, that would be fucking sick. <laughs> it is cool. The fans it's agreed sweet. with me. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I was poo-poo. They were like, Josh, be serious. I'm like, just a, take it to the fans. <laughs> and they liked it. Really nice. But no, listen, I mean, we went through, we went from, it was almost like a Leicester season, mm -hmm. right? Like, we yeah. went worst to first. Yeah, yeah, we were the worst. We were the laughing stock of the league. Complete joke. Then we, our sporting director is unbelievable. I was working more in a more official capacity with the team last year. Uh, now, kind of just removed from from ownership. But my goodness, I've worked with a lot of sporting directors, and Yael, who is our sporting director, is fucking class. Yeah, like she is so professional. She's so smart, and she's people. There's a difference between my parents are in politics, and so I've seen this my whole life. There's a difference between talking and having people nod when you're talking. Yeah, you know, like yeah. a lot of people fucking talk. <laughs> yeah, right. I remember before the season with Gotham, there was a a meeting with the whole team and ownership, and Yael was a part of our first team. The when we actually won the first ever championship in mm -hmm. I think it was 2009, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and then we haven't come close since. And she okay. gave a speech where she was like, this is what we're going to do this year. Like, this is right. the team that I came into. This is where it's grown to. This is where we are right now. Yeah. And it was like, I was in the room and I'm looking around. Like, we brought a new coach in who's a fucking legend, by the way. Juan right. Carlos, he's the legend. Sick. Spanish cool. guy. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a savage. I love him. <laughs> so cool. Uh, but, like, I'm listening to this speech before the season. I'm like, yeah. yeah and i'm looking around and everyone's like yeah yeah and yeah, you know nice. it was a good season like we we had a, a good season a little bit of trouble scoring goals mm -hmm. but you know you, as you do it as it happens to the best of yeah, us and then yeah, arsenal yeah. pop out and have <laughs> yeah. six goals for yeah. five games in a row yeah, yeah and and the weird thing the one thing i will say to the san diego coach's point is like I almost feel like you get punished for being in first and second in the NWSL the way it is right now because, like, I don't want a game off. Mm. If we're heading into the playoffs, like, I want, we were sixth place, so oh, okay, one and so. two get a bye. Yeah, yeah okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three plays against six at mm. the home of three, yeah. five plays against four, and so so we were, like, nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? It was like, fuck it. We're, we're playing away. We're not having another home game. Mm. Yeah. So let's just go for it. Let's go for it. Yeah. And then you look at like Portland and San Diego, yeah. and it's like, 
they have buys. I think yeah. San Diego was was the two, but like you don't want to go into a playoff game cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, not at all. I mean, you the week expand does, to eight, does then, ruins then the rhythm. Do the playoff through that, or I would expand to eight. Um, How many teams are actually in or the, four. In the league? Uh, it's twelve right oh, now. Maybe I push it on, maybe a little bit. I would go. Uh, listen, I would go four <coughs> here and yeah, yeah, straight shoot up. Yeah. yeah. Or oh, do you like the playoff system? Like, do you, do you prefer that? Because they do it the old-fashioned way and just say whoever wins the league. Well, well the yeah, league, that's, that's what they, they were saying. <laughs> I think but. that they should have two. I, it's I, the MLS has this right. It's like mm. you you win the league. Like everyone cares more about the MLS Cup, mm-hmm. but like if you win the league, you get like the like you win the league. Oh right, right, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Supporters yeah. shield. And yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. And like no one really, but like it matters. Like listen, if you. I, we were t- I was talking about this actually ironically my my brother went to Princeton and mm. Princeton basketball is having a crazy year and my brother was like dude so fucking stupid how it's it's set up only one Ivy League team can get in to the N- NCAA really? tournament yeah. so he's like really? yeah 21 and he's like no matter how good we are like if we lose the N- the Ivy League tournament yeah like crazy. if Harvard goes on a run and beats us yeah. like we're not in the tournament mm-hmm. that's crazy and like it's kind of that that idea yeah 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 where like you, you should give someone their flowers for just dominating yeah. Yeah, yeah but I also like the idea in the United States that like yeah there's a culture there isn't it of playoffs and like yeah, and the post season yeah. clutch up you know yeah. Like yeah. playoff player like yeah, yeah, yeah that whole stuff like I like that I think it may, also makes it a little bit more interesting like this is this is a one game. Like you have to turn up. It's not yeah. like the, the, it's more like Champions League. Yeah, right? it's more yeah. like Champions yeah, League. It's like, are you ready on the day or are you yeah. not? Like, which and one? on that point, I wish the Champions League was one leg. Really? Oof. Just one game? I wish. I wish. Really? I, I but then really I like really the, the added twist of like you can be two 0 down yeah, and then overturn I, I like that. It. It, it's kind we of like the magic it no of it sometimes, it was, right? Because we, yeah. we have uh, that's my opinion. Is like no matter what it is, we'll like it because we yeah. have all the memories. Oh, you mm. came back. But imagine, right? Like. AC Milan, Liverpool, that Champions League final. Yeah. Or it's 3 0 down and a half. Mm-hmm. And the, like, imagine yeah, like, that's the comeback story. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's just yeah, hard fair. to beat. That's what I was saying earlier with the budgets. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that's a good point, actually, in terms of it. It's an up, it probably gives the advantage back to the bigger teams with one leg, you know. But the FA Cup doesn't. can happen. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why the German Cup. Mm. You know, like. Is that one, like, the. Well, yeah, I guess yeah, it must be, yeah. yeah. And in the I FA Cup, so. uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if you tie, you get a rematch? Yeah. Uh, uh, until they stopped. Quarter, it now. Quarter, quarter finals, I think. Yeah, quarter stops. finals yeah. stops, but before you get a replay. What the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> <But> <laughs> the other ends in the draw. Yeah. And it goes to the other place. Yeah, right? it goes to the other place. The what only thing that, that? The only thing that does is it helps the smaller teams. The smaller teams love it. Because a small team yeah, can go, then go to, if they get a draw at home, they're going to get an old track and get all and the they, And they have to split the uh, ticket revenue yeah, 50% each time for FA Cup. So games. I guess it's to help them. So their dream okay. is to get a, a draw want to at Old Trafford or the Emirates or something. Because that's actually when Saarbrook, uh, like it, when, you, when you look at in Germany, like yeah. the dream is to win. Yeah. Like you're not going into the 95th minute with Bayern Munich to go to Munich and split the, re- like you're going to yeah. fucking beat them. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah of course. Like, and I think that that you give 90 extra minutes for the more expensive team and the more expensive coach to think of a way to beat, beat down the less, like for mm. me, it's, it's not that fair. Yeah. At the I end. get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. All right, well, let's, let's, let's chat a bit about the World Cup going to the US and kind of, I guess, the, the development of football in, in the US. Um, like how, from your side, what have you seen? Is it, is, it, is it booming at the moment? Is it getting much bigger? And then, obviously, how you're feeling about the World Cup final being in New Jersey. It must be exciting, bro. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be in attendance. Oh, I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, um, to answer the first part, yeah. uh, Messi coming was huge it has mm. been huge i mean yeah. i saw i saw a sports illustrator or espn or something thing that got released where they do like the most popular athlete in america Fine. every year and messi's the most popular athlete in america really? that's crazy yeah. even after lebron season this year yeah. first that's time ever that it's been a soccer player and it's messy and this guy messi has me weak as fuck because <laughs> because he's like so goaded and he's so like beyond legendary that yeah. he just doesn't give a fuck like he literally refuses to speak english yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he does apparently speak english and yeah. he does he does he does he does right? yeah. like and he's just like no, no. like <laughs> like his his super bowl commercial 
I'm like watching it. He's, the only words he says are no, no, Mikolo. And I'm thinking, I'm like, that was in Spanish. <laughs> right? Like, that was in Spanish. Like, even getting the biggest bag ever, yeah. he's like, I'm not fucking speaking English. <laughs> no. But, like, his arrival, cultural, mm, iconic. Yeah. People care. I was at the game. I don't know. Did you guys see the assist that he, or the goal that he scored against the Red Bull where he was like, he takes like five guys yeah. out with a pass. Yeah. 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 That's it back. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, was yeah, there yeah. And I was like right on the lot, like watching from right where he did it. And like everyone and like, you don't see Red Bull arena pack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But well, I mean, certainly not for the Red Bull. I swear, yeah, yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> the tickets are insane, though, for Messi. Like the yeah. the um, Inter Miami tickets have just gone like, yeah. through the roof, and whenever he's injured, they just like shoot back down again. Bro, it's crazy. And yeah. people are like taking flyers on like oh, like he's gonna be. I think it's next time he's in New York, he's gonna be captaining Argentina and Philadelphia mm. at mm-hmm. the same time. Wow. And the ticket prices were like yeah. while these rumors are surging, it's like yeah. running around. But to answer your point. I think there's a lot of growth. Yeah. I think that Americans are finally appreciating soccer. Mm. But, like, think about it this way. The last World Cup that we had was 1994. Mm. The MLS was founded in 1993 okay. as a part of the, the World Cup. Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look at how much the MLS has grown. I mean, yeah. David Beckham. Yeah, I was, that's mm. what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Beckham, Beckham was yeah. that, wasn't it? That was some deal he got one. that, wasn't it? No, no, he, yeah. he got a oh, ridiculous yeah. deal. But him... Actually, like, I don't know if you watched the documentary, like him yeah. explaining his decision. Sick. Yeah. Mm. And like, yeah. It, obviously the stories come out after as like, how much he got paid and what the interest for him for going there is, it's all incredible. But then if you watch from then, even just one, the amount of players who then decided I'm going to the MLS mm. and two, the amount of players from America who are now some of the best players in Europe. Like mm. I know Perisic has gone downhill a little bit, but when he came to Chelsea, everyone was like, well, this American geezer, I can't remember who some. Uh, I can't remember who it was in America. who said he's the LeBron James. Of oh soccer. mate, that's the funniest. Yeah. Clip. The fun- I was just like, um, yeah. is that that show, uh, Paul uh, Focus or something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was definitely. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? Skip Bayless or something. Pro- like probably that. <laughs> fucking Skip Bayless. <laughs> but like the level, the level of notoriety that football is now getting in America is unbelievable. Like even like Messi, for example, is obviously a different animal. But even guys like. When Ibrahimovic went to LA, mm, when yeah. Henri went to New York, when, remember that? For me, that was big. Yeah. I, when Henri came to the Red Bull, yeah, that's when I used to go to Red Bull games, mm. and like that was fucking. They had Henri, Rafael Marquez, yeah. Mm. You should, you should be an Arsenal fan, man. <laughs> yeah, the, Henri, the love for Henri, bro. Henri, I I really love Henri. Yeah, and yeah. when he scored that goal and he came back, against Leeds. Yeah. Have you ever watched it with the Titanic music in yeah, the background? From the tears of my eye every time. Oh my god! And he's running away. I'm literally watching. Like if I'm hungover, like if I were to watch that right now, I definitely would cry. Like fucking beautiful. <laughs> it was such a magic moment, man. Yeah. Love it, love it so much. But I, I agree with you. And the way that this is my bold prediction of the podcast: mm. the United States will make it to the semifinals of the 2026 World Cup. Wow! Wow! wow. wow. Clip that! Clip <laughs> that right <Wow>. now. Yeah. <laughs> well, back, I, I could that one. This up so I could drop. It. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think that we will. I think that. I mean, first of all, home support is fucking huge massive yeah mm-hmm. second of all we're good yeah mm-hmm. we're good yeah right like we got some ballers and we got some kids who are coming up i saw i mean taylor twelman <laughs> he he says a lot but he leaked yesterday or the day before that man city's scouting team mm. believes that this uh 14 year old forgetting his name uh it's something i think Coven sullivan something like that is the best 14 year old in the world yeah. a philadelphia union kid and he, right, like, he plays for Man City or they're scouting him? No, they're uh, apparently. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's from Taylor. Twal- it's from yeah. a third source who, yeah, yeah. who, is, uh, <laughs> who says a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I generally, like, I, I trust Taylor Twalman and I believe I've seen this kid. I haven't seen him live, but like, I've seen this kid's highlights. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mentally, like, he's yeah. at a different level. Yeah. And there's so many kids right now. You know, I was watching. I was at a Wolfsburg game and I was watching Paredes, the mm. the younger kid. He doesn't get that much. He, people don't really talk about him as much. Mm. I was watching him warm up, mm. just warm up. I'm like, 
qualities yeah, of yeah. what is that yeah, yeah, yeah right like this kid's moving like crazy yeah and like our we are so we're going to be so deep mm. and we won't necessarily have five christian pool stitches in 2026 mm. but we'll have six weston mckenney's <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> You know, it's like, decent. That's Tyler sure. Adams. Yeah. Like, our, our you look at our mid, look at our center midfield. Mm. McKenney, Adams, and what Musa? Musa, Musa, yeah. Right, right. Well, you got Juventus, AC Milan, Bournemouth. Yeah. yeah. Bournemouth. 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 I feel a little bit like that feels like a game of trade <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we wear black and red. <laughs> you know Milan boys. Let's go. Yeah, but Michael B. Jordan's. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's actually also a good point in terms of like American investors in football. Now you have Michael B. Jordan. You have Tom Brady. Um, bloody Ryan Reynolds. I mean, they're Canadian. Mm. The, the Cronkies. Yeah, the cron- a lot like, of Americans. Yeah. A lot of Americans are now thinking, wait, this football thing that everyone used to laugh at back in the day is actually like. There is some opportunities here to one grow it. Obviously, them being involved grows what happens in America, but them also getting involved creates a different paradigm into um, our, our thinking of Americans in the sport. Like for example, Arsenal guys, these lot a couple of years ago, if you asked them about Stan Kroenke, would have said still don't particularly like it. Yeah, yeah. he would have said a lot yeah. worse back in the day. But it's yeah. his son, right? It's yeah, I like Josh. Involved. I like Josh. Yeah, uh, me too. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Stan can do one. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, when it comes to American sports, like I mean, you look at some of the athletes that come out of that bloody country, man. It's so big too, and there's so much. I mean, like, you look at the Olympic domination. Like, mm, if yeah. America took football seriously, oh, they they they'd be a, they, complete, they, they'd be a group powerhouse. I remember like, chatting tension. to you, Josh, about kind of the amount of talent that the US has For that. Sure that could come and play in Europe that maybe it doesn't get the chance that it, 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 that's it should. Issue. Yeah. That, and th- that's the biggest issue. So when I was, uh, bringing kids over to Hertha, um, which I, I did at one point, I was trying to help myself help the kids and help Hertha. <laughs> mm, yeah. Fucking trifecta. <laughs> uh, but we did like a deep analysis. I did it with the Hertha guys. Like what is the issue? Like where is the disconnect? Yeah. Right. Like our kids are so fucking good. Yeah why aren't our why aren't we yeah, yeah right and and what we found when when what we looked at it was that americans don't go pro quick enough mm-hmm. uh-huh yeah so i'm like huh interesting right college is fucking forget about it yeah. fucking forget about it if you want to go professional and you go to college yeah you could make it but i'll fucking be like what are you doing yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. right like the college well, I guess it can't work. But that's such a big part of professional sport in America, right? That you do normally go to college and then you feed every out of that. Sport. Yeah, every yeah. other sport, yeah. like you have to. Basically, yeah, yeah. Right? Whereas, yeah, football, you need to be in an academy from like age twelve and exactly. Exactly. leave school at sixteen yeah, or whatever. What yeah. Even if, in England, you leave school at sixteen. If yeah. you had a super talented yeah. American sixteen-year-old and you were looking after him, what would your kind of what would your path? And he was from like I don't know New York. Let's what, say what, that what there are two there? options, right? Because at sixteen, if you have uh, a European passport. So if you have a, like Christian Pulisic, yeah. mm. he's got a Croatian passport or right. has the ability to have Croatian citizenship. Yeah. That's why he got to go to Dortmund at 16. Right, I see. Otherwise, you have to wait until you're 18 oh, okay. to make the jump. Yeah. So, so I'll answer it in two ways. If I have a European passport, yeah. if I have any ability to get a European passport. Find a random grand mall. Yeah. Well, I don't care if it's something. Malta. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking getting that. Yeah. And uh, we're going to Europe. Yeah. That's the first answer. Yeah. If we can't do that, I'm sending him to the USL, mm. which is the the second league in yeah. in America. I'm a big fan of the USL for development. Mm. Uh, there's one case one case study that really made me pay attention. This kid Nate Worth, who was uh, the youngest um, kid to ever play for the Red Bull professionally, played for Red Bull two at the age of 16, barely after he turned 16. Then last summer, he goes to the USL. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is their youngest, <laughs> right? So I, I look into it. I see this interview that he has, and he's like, listen, I want to be playing in front of fans that care about winning or losing, not yeah. in front of people who are trying to see if I'm ready for the first team. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, I want to be playing pro. I want to be competing. Yeah. And it shifted my whole perspective. And yeah. then you look at the average age in the USL, you got guys debuting at 15. Wow. Damn. That's mad. And I it's mean, a high level. Yeah, yeah. And I think that it, I'm very focused on the USL. And I speak to all my German and, and European contacts. I'm always talking about the USL. Because it's the way I see it, Portugal is is the entryway 
to Portugal and France, but really Portugal from the Americas is mm. how you get into Europe, right? You come into Portugal or you come into France. America, through the USL, can become that entryway for anywhere. Mm. Yeah, You could bring people from Africa into the USL to then send them yeah. to Europe. You could bring people from Colombia, Brazil, yeah. up to the USL. You could, And the other thing is MLS has territory rules, and they're mm. making them less and less strict. Yeah. But the USL has no territory rules. What, what do you mean by territory rules? So if if I'm from like I'm technically within the New York Red Bulls territory, right? Okay. So if another team were to sign me, and they're changing, well, like there's so. like a catchment area of what, yeah. where they can find players. Yeah. Okay, I'm with fucking, you. Right. Okay, yeah. At one point, it was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I would every time I would talk to the MLS, I'm like, you guys are taking the fucking. Piss. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like at one point, you didn't even have to have the players signed. But you could fl- you could flag them as in your territory. So then, if you're Philadelphia, God. and you come and you're like, "Hey, Josh, we want to sign you." I'm like, "Cool, I want to play for you." Yeah. The Red Bull get to come in and say, "Hey, we've never fucking trained this guy, <laughs> but, but he's like he's in our territory." And they're changing it and they're making it better. <laughs> yeah. But it's still, I mean, it's it's a bit, it's a bit ridiculous. But the USL yeah. doesn't have that. So Nate Worth, this kid who's from New Jersey, moves to Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. wow, literally. Mad Tulsa to play, <laughs> to play. Yeah, and yeah. like that's good on him. Yeah. Good on his agent is what I would say. He's taking his career into his own hands is not waiting around for the corporates to decide the A already. Then yeah. yeah, there's a lot of politics in everything, mm. especially fucking yeah. politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But football's politics, not far behind, to be fair. Right, just try and get yourself, try and remove as much of the politics as possible. And the way to do that, in my opinion, is to play. Yeah, yeah. Create Agreed. your own value. Yeah, you know. Nice. All right. Well, should we finish it off with some quick fire? Some quick fire questions and just your responses to it. Hit me. Best player you've ever played football with, kicked the ball with? Maybe most legendary. I've kicked the ball with Sammy Kadira. Nice. I've never played with him. He, I was the captain and he was the coach in one particular <laughs> game, But we never have actually played together. Was it a good working relationship between the captain and the manager? It was. <laughs> because of the respect that I have for him. Good, I mean, good, he man. put me at fucking right center back. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, are we sure about this? He's like, trust me, we need to win the game. And not only did we win the game, we won the whole tournament. Oh, yeah, so at the end, you know, we were with the little, the little trophy. He's the best I've, I've kicked with. Nice. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give you a scenario, right? Mm-hmm. It's Champions League final. Hertha are in it. Josh Murphy's playing. <laughs> and there's also the greatest penalty taker of all time. That's me. Um, <laughs> 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 so we know the answer, I was going to say, there's another player who claims to be the greatest penalty taker of all time. Who's taking the penalty? Josh Murphy. Fucking take <laughs> <laughs> he can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I agree with that I'll be I'll, taking it as well. I'll walk up to Zidane and say not today <laughs> <laughs> and I have so much respect for Zidane, Zidane. <laughs> I just remember me and Josh would be like I'm the greatest yeah. Yeah. Of all time. Bro, if I get too drunk and we're talking about football I'll be like guys <laughs> no one can save a penalty <laughs> <laughs> you know and I, funny enough having met you Josh I feel like if you did say that to Zinedine Zidane he'd be like I, I think you go out of that. Yeah. You'd be like, fucking crack on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. Who's going to win the Premier League? Who do you think? Arsenal, City, Liverpool? Not Spurs? <laughs> Get out of here, man. <laughs> I, definitely not that. Uh, <laughs> what was it, that one? I think. I hope it's not City. I, I think it's going to be Liverpool or City. I'm sorry. I think, yeah. I'm going to go with Liverpool. I, I, I think that's fair, to be honest. Yeah. Liverpool is a destiny season, one. similar yeah. to what we're saying. Written yeah. stars. Written stars. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, if you had the choice of one superpower, what is it? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a bit of a rogue one. I would definitely, definitely read minds. Read Ooh. minds. Nice. Wow. That. That was I, a, I don't mind that. That's a mess. I don't mind that this one. This guy went for invisibility. Oh, yeah. Invisibility one, one episode. Uh, no, I want to be the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just like a consistent like spotlight. Yeah. And just like following me around. <laughs> uh, there's always a camera that I can turn to. And <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Favorite city outside of the US? Ooh, I mean Berlin, but that, Berlin. You haven't lived it. Let's say you haven't, like, or yeah. I fucking love Lisbon. 
Nice. Oh, it's so nice. I like Brisbane. Yeah. Such a nice. It's too place, hilly man. though. That's the only thing. Yeah. It's, it's too hilly. Too hilly. Too yeah, hills. bro. I know. It's like I'm like fucking. Yeah. Hell. <laughs> you stand at the bottom thinking I really have to go up there. <laughs> it's true. It's it's so true. long. But no, I I loved it there. I did some stuff with Benfica, and I love Benfica nice, and the yeah. culture of Benfica is unlike anything honestly yeah. I've ever seen. Like they have. I've never seen a country support a club. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, you look in, in Germany, like, everyone outside of Munich is like, those guys. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> in Portugal, it's like Benfica. Benfica. And the there are other team. massive teams, of course, but I was shocked. It's that. also the way they run as well. They're probably, like, the no. best run club. They're, like, a no. Fortune 500, bro. Yeah. Like, the yeah. Way, yeah. The way yeah. they run, the way that Money they, they talk. Make, man, no, like, 100 well. mil every summer, basically. Yeah. 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 So one player. They are... They are so impressive. Yeah. And I and the city of Lisbon is like fucking on beautiful. Yeah, 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 it's beautiful. Yeah. It there. Pink Street. Yeah. Pink Street. <laughs> Shout out Pink Street. What 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 Good was offer. involved in that deal with kind of Gotham and Benfica? Was that kind of the the academy of play, like the players uh kind so of it was, it was kind of an experimental kind of like first of its kind in, in our eyes partnership yeah. where like the goal was, you know, to first of all from Cross promotional, of course. Mm. Uh, so, New Jersey actually has one of the biggest populations of Portuguese people outside of Portugal in the world. Okay. Yeah, wow. uh, in the Ironbound district and in kind of Newark. So, it was a, it made sense cross promotionally, and yeah. then like from our perspective as Gotham, we're like fucking out. Like, <laughs> this is <laughs> the yeah. best academy, yeah. probably in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. At least the best at making money. Yeah, hundred yeah. 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 percent. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, so. We wanted their expertise, and obviously, you know, a lot of European teams look to the United States and mm -hmm. look for marketing mm -hmm. and look for, you know, other stuff kind of off the field. Yeah. So we started a really broad partnership between the nice. two clubs. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I, 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 I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a dream, dream link up, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. how, how long has that been in place for? Has it bad any fruits yet? Is anyone exciting? Uh, we've we had one an player go over there. Um, I wish we would lean into it a little bit more. The The issue is, the way that I see it, the issue is, like, our league is expanding at the same time that their league is expanding. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Right? And, yeah. like, the game is growing in both continents. Yeah. yeah. And, like, they're in the Champions League. We're winning the title. Mm -hmm. Like, and at the same time, we're both figuring out how to operate within our mm. own ecosystem, within yeah. our own yeah. kind of demographic. And it's it's just another thing. Right? Like, sure. I, I think it will it will bear more fruit going forward. Um, but it, the crazy thing that struck me is like when you see the the guys teams, the two partnerships, for the most part, it's either one side is really trying to gain. So they're putting yeah. a lot of the work in yeah. or both sides are so kind of well established that it's yeah. kind of an easy thing. And yeah. this, it's both are, are trying getting to, to the next level. Yeah, so the sure. focus is elsewhere. How how is the growth in the in the in the women's game in the US? Like, I mean, obviously, there's the potential for that to be a, a massive industry, mm -hmm. and there's the growth is pretty big in 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 the UK and around Europe, I imagine. But it's is it is it happening like that in in the US as well? A hundred percent, I think. Uh, I mean, I guess US is always that more prominent. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, for for women, right? I think it, we we were kind of the the hegemons, so to speak, because mm. we did we started first yeah yeah but what i will say is uh when i was in portugal this was before the women's world cup the portuguese coaches they were telling me they were like your team you guys don't have it anymore you're, <laughs> you're way behind in terms of development mm -hmm. and I, i'm used to hearing that we are incredible the, the, the top yeah. yeah so i'm like fuck off <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean and and he's like listen tactically We've been studying it for months. Tactically, the United States is well behind. Uh -huh. And you're going to see it yeah. in the World Cup this summer. And I was like, all right, yeah, I guess yeah. we will. Right? And then yeah. the guy's like, I bet you that Portugal knocks the United States out wow. in the group stages. And I'm like, dude, fuck off. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> like, pretty what? close, didn't they? We finished second in yeah. our group. We tied Portugal 1-1 in the last yeah. game. They hit the fucking post in the 80s. Yes, they did. Yes, I and I'm that. watching and I'm like... Ooh. I text those boys. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know what? From what I see, we our development is, is lagging a bit mm -hmm. in the United States yeah. for the, on the women's side. I, yeah. Look at, I mean, look at the numbers, right? Yeah. Look at the best players in the world. Yeah. They're not American anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden. But you guys were so far ahead now. Yeah. Like, so maybe it's just more of like years. a leveling out, right? But yeah. 
I, 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 I probably see you guys coming back for. I in, hope. So. In, I think yeah, we will. Future, well. future it's tournaments. So yeah. ingrained, like men's mm-hmm. soccer is like mm-hmm. not ours. Yeah, yeah. we don't yeah. feel no one in the United. Even and we're gonna be good. But, yeah. And we're going to be very good, I think. Semi final good. <laughs> Semi final good. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. But no one is like, oh my God, like, this is our sport. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. soccer, it's like, yes, this is our sport. Yeah. Makes sense. So we will get, like, we have the cock, we have the swagger and the cockiness to basically do our American stuff and yeah. be like, we're going back to the top. <laughs> mm. And we're fighting that in on the men's side. Nice. All right, well, I think we kind of need to wrap it up there because our, our man needs to leave. I, I feel like we could sit here for hours <laughs> 100%. And, just, and chat for ages. I will just finish it off with, have you made any more progress with Sydney Sweeney? <laughs> Unfortunately, I uh, cannot disclose. <laughs> nah. Wow. But, no, I, I have not. <laughs> no rumors about me and Sydney. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, sweet. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Josh. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Great to see you. Uh, we'd love Thanks to do it again right. sometime. Thanks for so nice. nice. there's, there's a lot Cheers more that we can kind of dig into, I'm sure. So if you're ever about, then we'd hey, love never to know. Have you back, Next mate. one, New Jersey 2022. <laughs> yeah. yeah, big maybe, time. Maybe. Why not? <laughs> no, I know. See you at the final, <laughs> mate. Yeah. Berlin? That'd this summer true. that would be a dream yeah the pod goes international yeah. I, I'm going to try and get to Germany for as much. I want to go to the first game it's Scotland versus Germany so of course we would yeah. be unreal at the Allianz so that's it would be yeah. Yeah. Nick, you know a guy yeah. <laughs> I know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm trying I'm trying yeah. but yeah, anyway thank you for watching please like subscribe to the channel follow us on Spotify Apple Podcasts and we will see you next week Woo.